Welcome back, Vicarious viewers. My name is Vicente, and we have our second episode of American Horror Story 1984. Let's get back into some horror. I love October. I love scary movies, scary books. Uh, it's my favorite holiday. So I'm ready to get back into this. And if you want to know what I thought of uh, last episode, you can watch the end of my last video. But I'm expecting a good blend of the dark comedy for the 80s tropes mixed with uh, some good blood and gore. Grab yourself a beer. Cheers. Hello? Oh. I know her from something. I'm looking for Margaret Booth. You aren't going to snip in my bedroom, are you? <laughs> no, of course not. Miss Booth, I've been trying to call, but I keep getting a busy signal. Well, that's funny. Benjamin Richter has escaped. You have to shut down. Oh, I'll be doing no such thing. Did she expect well, that? Karen, I will not allow him to take away my power again. Then call the police. Not that I'll be needing anything from them. Just a theory. She opened the camp to lure Mr. Jingles and arrange for him to escape so that she can before. kill him. And if he is stupid enough to show up, then I can promise you Mr. Jingles will not survive me. Yeah, she wants this. She wants to kill him. I think she has something to do with his escape. I was thinking it'd be interesting if... Oh, shit. If there were multiple killers in this who were completely oblivious to each other if they kind of blended the different uh, camp horror revenge stories into multiple characters and uh, they become each other's competition in the slang <laughs> that would be fun what are the odds of me meeting you out here pretty good since you followed me here Body count is rising. I still think they could have mixed a little bit of their like signature weird noise into this song. Miss Booth, I think we're in danger. Yes, we are in danger from sin. You gonna make us pray the boners away? <laughs> Bitch. She has got to get laid, otherwise, it's gonna be a long summer. I mean, a stranger once wrapped my boob outside of Sam Goody, so I get it. <laughs> if you imagine the worst, that's all you see. You don't have to imagine the worst when it's already happened. We are gathered here on this day to join this man. So living the worst was a wedding. Nervous or something. And this woman in holy matrimony. Hey, don't be afraid. Oh shit. <laughs> Was that his father or hers? His? <gasps> hers, I think. Wasn't he just the one that gave her away? <laughs> well, he obviously didn't kill her. Damn. He wanted to own you, your mind, your pussy. He thought it was all his. I never would have cheated on Joey. Would you have wanted to stay with someone that was I like that anyway? <laughs> I, I need to get some air. Where are the towels and little soaps? You know this isn't a spa, right? Bring your own. Get my beach towel. Beach towel? Uh, the camp counselor, they're all just bait. <laughs> She's ready to wage war on Mr. Jingles. This seems awfully soon, so I don't know if this is going to be, like, the main overarching story. Mr. Jingles. Who the fuck? What the hell, Blake? That name is reserved wow, Blake. for business associates and acquaintances. What the hell, Daddy? Father or Daddy? But you are a 
goddamn Rembrandt. Do you think that I would give up a Rembrandt? No, Daddy. You are very, very pretty. You promised me I only had to do one. I'm not gay. And what if I could get you someone better to replace me? Even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably do it too. That's no God. It's an act of God. <laughs> Boy, are you about to die? <laughs> Solves that problem. When he went back, he didn't notice that protruding from the wall. And who the fuck is this psycho? How did you find me? Just randomly comes in through her window. Invite him in. And finds her at camp. So I think we have. Well, no, I guess he could have been the one that killed. Um, what's his name behind the door? The guy with the missing ear. You're Wait. Supposed to be here. That guy. Wasn't Wait, he just I dead? <laughs> I don't die here. What the fuck does that mean? Wasn't he posted to the door in the last episode? He also said you're not supposed to be here, right? I wonder if this is going for like one of those cabin in the woods type situations. There's a lot of freakier shit going on. You're not supposed to be here. You. How are you alive? Hey, yes. How are you alive? Counselor. Oh, uh, is he a ghost from the original camp? Like, stuck yes. to, like, die there forever? Over and over? Oh, uh, there's some weirder shit going on. So, slasher movie slash ghost story. Jesus Christ! Does either of you know who he is? Shouldn't you check his pulse or something? Yeah, that'll help. Thank you, beefy Rob Stark. <laughs> I think he was checking me out. <laughs> True. Jesus Christ! Oh no, here she goes. Oh, we have to help him. <laughs> Somebody do something. Why would anyone think I'm involved? Because he was there to see you. Life. Guys. Wait, whose body was in the lake? Nice stalker. It's Jingles. Let's get the fuck out of here. So maybe this camp has uh, kind of properties of maybe like Roanoke, that house, that property. Servant of the Lord's son. You're a Christian? <laughs> the other son. What do you want? To tell me about him. The counselor did see him, right? You're hurt. Damn, now I'm trying to remember everything that happened in the first episode. He's at the dinner in hotel. Richard Ramirez, right? I wonder if this is where he dies. I'll look for this mysterious counselor, but I must insist that you do not murder anyone along the way. Is he gonna buy that? Or will his murderous impulses get the better of him? Great way to manipulate one killer against the other, though. She knows what she's doing. I can't die with a guilty conscience. I totally did those steroids. Yeah, we all fucking know! <laughs> What's about to happen? That's why you just hit a motherfucker. Rita? Oh. Are you okay? Well, I guess they didn't want to hit her. And I heard it. The jingling. He's back. Oh, fuck. It is you. You're really here, Jonas. So she didn't see him before. Is this possible? Am I a ghost? Who am I, Dan Aykroyd, I guess? Fuck you, why me? You're a world-class athlete, you're faster than all of us. And y'all are being loud. Shh. The keys are in my desk. Well, you know where your desk is. They're not here. Girl, step four feet and get your own damn keys. I shouldn't have come here. I just wanted to get away. Have a 
hot in summer, a, a little fresh air. <laughs> Why are you wigging out now is not the time. Because exactly. all this is my fault. That guy in the shower. We all need to survive. I knew it. His His name snap out Blake. of it. He came here because of me and now. Now she's looking. <gasps> That's Gus Kenworthy. How did I not recognize him? Everyone I get close to. It's the hair. The hair makes him look like beefy Rob Stark. I like Gus Kenworthy. He saved me. I screwed him over. And all of this is my punishment. Okay. We're all gonna die. Each of them's got a killer. Was that really a whole episode? Damn. Aw. Fuck. Wow, well, I guess the episode was only 40 minutes long. That was... That went by fast. Okay, so one of them has... Mr. Jingles, and the other one is being attacked by the Night Stalker. Even though What's-Her-Name told him not to kill anyone else besides Mr. Jingles... So why would he be banging on one of their doors? He'd be looking for jingling, right? Unless he's just planning on doing his own thing and chasing her down and killing them anyway. Which I wouldn't blame him for. I mean, the camp counselor was pretty good, but is she that good to sway him from uh, his urges to kill? And we have a ghost story as well. We know that a, like a whole property can be haunted because of Roanoke, uh, Roanoke Nightmare. Which would make me think that there's probably more ghosts there, too. I wonder why he would be the only one in a place with, like, a history of murder like that. So maybe there's some more ghosts, like, banging on the other door. Hmm. And I, uh, recognize that beefy Rob Stark is Gus Kenworthy, the uh, Olympic skier. How did I not recognize him this whole time? Whenever, I think it's the hair. The hair just made me think, like, oh, he looks like a thicker Rob Stark. Similar jawline or something but oh well Gus Kenworthy cool I didn't realize he was in this he's all right so far I think he's better at skiing but he's doing okay as the uh, arrogant meathead so far we get a little more of that one guy's backstory when his old sugar daddy slash porn producer gets a hold of him but uh yeah but he's already killed off the field already so I guess he was just a narrative device to introduce some backstory and also get an extra body in there for the killing. Because I guess you don't want to kill off, like, all of your cast right out of the second episode. You gotta have a few extra meat shields coming in to take the blows. Some red shirts. Um. Oh, and the Night Stalker is Ramirez, uh, who later goes on to have his ghost dinner at Hotel. But of course he looked a lot older in that, so... So I guess we should assume that he doesn't die here and goes on to do more of his uh, stalking. Though this might be his end. I'm not too familiar with his like real-life history. Was he ever caught? I guess we'll find out. Part of me wants to like look it up, but uh, maybe that would just spoil it for me. Let's let it be a surprise. That does suck for that ghost, though. Having to just like, constantly live in fear that you're being hunted for all eternity and not remember that you've been doing it every night since you were already killed. That's gotta be hell. I wonder if there's a way to snap him out of it. To make him realize what he is and like become aware. I mean then he would be an ally because then he literally wouldn't have to worry about dying because he can't die. They could just like kill him and poof he's back. It'd be cool to be a self-aware ghost. Besides being trapped in like the same clothing in the same place for all eternity and not allowed to go anywhere else. I would get old. And I think it's all but confirmed that Camp Counselor Lady is a little psycho. That she opened the camp and she's invited Mr. Jingles because she wants to protect the camp, but also kill Mr. Jingles. Um, I guess getting other people to do it for her is easier, so this may have just been a like, oh, here's an opportunity to not get my hands dirty if I can send another killer off to take him out. But I think a lot of that was true for her when she was telling him, like, it's changed her and made her a survivor. And 
I don't think she, I think she doesn't want the kids to die because she wants a wholesome experience, but in the end, I think that she'll consider them to be pawns in her scheme to end Mr. Jingles once and for all. I wonder how long that storyline will go out before, like, one of these killers kills the other. But we shall see once I get around to episode three. What did you guys think of this episode? I'm digging the uh, fun campiness of it, a return to the 80s. I'm digging it. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single one. And thanks for stopping in for this vicarious view.